Hey fishing friend, JC here with Rad Reeling Fishing. In this video, I'm installing my Helix 5 Hummingbird Fish Finder on my Old Town Sportsman Autopilot 120 kayak. But I'm gonna put a clip in here right now from a previous video where I prepared the wiring with the inline fuse. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, we have our Helix 5. I'm gonna get the power hooked up to the battery first and then I'm just gonna give this thing a check, make sure that it's working. <laughs> All right, she's working good. All right guys, these are all the things that I had to purchase separately in order to get the Helix 5 Fish Finder rigged up on my kayak. I'll put links in the description area to a lot of these different products. Let's start out here. I purchased a three amp inline fuse that'll go on the positive side of my cable that attaches to the battery. I also purchased a ram mount, you guys, but this ram mount is actually designed, has, the bracket is for the Helix 5 Fish Finder. Uh, specifically, it, it matches up with the bracket that holds the Fish Finder in place. So we have the ram mount. I got some, let's see here, we have a universal battery. I paid about $31 for this on Amazon. 12 volt, nine amp hour battery. I purchased a lighter at the Dollar Tree. That's gonna be for heating up the shrink wrap. I don't have a little heat gun or anything. Just figured I'd do it with a lighter. I got some liquid tape, you guys. My buddy told me once I solder the wires together for the inline fuse connection, he said to uh, use the shrink wrap and then seal it up with some liquid tape. Uh, I got some liquid tape. And then we have um, a little kit here, you guys, that has a lot of different connectors that uh, some of these I'm gonna use while I'm setting up this fish finder. It's got the shrink wrap. Anyway, found this kit on Amazon, reasonably priced. It's got enough connectors to last me a lifetime here for sure. All right, now I had to go to the hardware store and purchase some stainless steel screws to make all this stuff work. I have four one inch long 10 by 24 screws and these also have the stainless steel nuts with the plastic inserts in them. These are gonna be used for attaching the fish finder bracket to the ram mount. There's four screws, that's what those are gonna be used for. All right guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get my inline fuse connected to the power supply. For the helix and um, this thing just comes looped together so we need to we need to split this this apart just want to give myself a enough room here hey that works all right that looks pretty good there tell you what i'm gonna i'm gonna give myself a little bit more than that yeah think about like that that'll do all right we got the fuse side done let's do the battery side here Alright guys, my first attempt failed. Okay, so I had to peel back some wires. I need to put the shrink wrap on the long side here. I didn't realize the soldering gun was going to affect what I was doing. So I got my, my shrink wrap well out of the way of the soldering gun. And we're going to twist these wires together again here. Just crisscross them in the middle. And then I'm going to wrap it like I'm like I'm wrapping a fishing pole here. Wrapping a, a, a fishing line with a clinch knot. I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna wrap it back the other way. All right, I have my wires wrapped together. We're gonna give them a little solder job here. We have our wires soldered together, wrapped together, soldered together. Now we need to do a little Heat shrink job there. Good thing I'm right next to the kitchen sink. All right, we got the heat shrink on there. Not the prettiest job in the world, but we are gonna follow it up with some liquid tape to seal it up really good. All right, here in my little kit, I have some connectors. These are like the quarter inch connectors that'll slide onto the battery terminal. It should just slide right on there like that. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these to the wires. So these guys are crimp on connectors. So I need to strip this wire back. Twist that end and let's see if that'll fit. Slides right in there. All right. Come on. Shrink, 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 shrink. All right. Let's get this uh, side crimped on give it a check yeah she's solid baby solid 
So we, uh, we have our two connectors for the positive and the negative, and we have our inline fuse connected. That's all the wiring that we have to do here on this part. All right, I got my fuse in place, put the cap over to make that nice and waterproof there. I'm going to go ahead and take a moment and connect this back to the battery, get it connected to the fish finder. Make sure everything work, working fine before I get them all painted up with that liquid tape. Voila! That stuff is thick, thick, thick. Let me share with you real quick, if you ever have difficulty with your Helix 5 not coming on, you get it all plugged in and everything, you go to power it up and nothing happens, you know your battery's charged. I had this problem and what the problem was, was the connection that plugs into the back of the fish finder, the power supply. If you look at that right there, you can see how there's two wires sticking up in there. You can see those copper wires or whatever they are. You look at this one, you only see one. What happened is that, that one, the one pin on here, it actually pushed inside of the wiring. So even though it was plugged into the fish finder, it was short one wire making a connection. So I had to order a completely new wire and it's working fine. I got things set up good. But I just wanted to let you know if you ever have that problem, can't get it powered up, that possibly might be what the problem is. All right, let's get this uh, transducer installed here. All right, so your Helix 5 fish finder comes with a bracket that looks like this, except this one's broken. This is my second one that I broke. After I broke two of them, I completely eliminated that extra bracket that comes with the Helix 5 fish finder. I'm gonna show you how I did that, and I, it'll save you some aggravation if you rig your transducer this way, rather than using that extra bracket that they have in there. So right here is where your universal mounting area is for your transducer. This plate that you're looking at right here, that's actually the one that comes with the kayak, like that. It's on the kayak. So I've got my transducer mounted on there already. All I did, you guys, is I mounted the transducer directly to the mount that comes with the old town kayak you can see on the back side there I just chose the center hole and I just screwed that transducer directly on there and what that does what that does that eliminates the possibility of this extra plastic bracket breaking because what the problem was before was this this extra bracket whenever you got it installed on there there was a little bitty corner that was sticking up and it didn't matter how, how hard you pushed it down, there was a little corner sticking up and it, all, it tended to catch. And after I broke two of these brackets, I said, you know what, this is not working. I'm not gonna keep buying brackets to uh, install my, my transducer with, so. Now the screw that I used to screw that on there, it's just a 10 by 24, three quarter inch long bolt. And then on the back side, it's got the uh, keeper nut that has the plastic on it. See right there, the, the front of the transducer, it already had a hole in it, and it just, yeah, it fits right through there perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this screwed on here. So you can see there's, there's nothing sticking up now, nothing that'll catch on that. So yeah, it's good and solid. That one screw, that one screw holds it on there really, really good and solid. No problem with that at all. Take the other end of the transducer wire and we just thread it through the scupper hole. Go ahead and pull that all the way through. All right, so when you get your Autopilot 120 from Old Town, inside of your tackle tray, your complimentary tackle tray, there are some fittings like this. We're going to need the two of these right up here in the middle of where the motor goes. Um, we've got a plastic wiring grommet. We need to remove that and we're going to replace it with one of these guys. So I just pulled that out of there. Look on the bottom of that. It's got a piece of foam. We're going to use that piece of foam. We need that piece of foam because that's what's going to seal around the wires to keep the water from coming in. So this, this grommet's got a rubber seal on the back side of it. You wanna make sure you don't lose that. All right, now that I got the grommet off, okay, 
Next thing I need to do is take this end of the wire and I need to thread it up up from the bottom in into this wiring channel that's behind the electric motor mounting plate. There we go. Push that guy up through. Come on, get up there. Come on, here it comes. All right. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to pull I need to pull all this wire all the way through. Now, we're going to take and we need to put the the whole grommet on the end here. You have to make sure that your washer is in place on the grommet. Push it through that way. Once we have that through, now we're going to thread the wire into our hole. We're going to push all the wire up into the bow. I'm just holding on to the grommet here. Got the grommet in my hand while I'm pushing the wire. I got most of the wire fed in there. My next step is going to be to take that little piece of foam that we pulled out. I'm going to take that foam and it's got slits in it. Take and open up one of those slits and put it around the wire like that. And then that foam fits inside of the wire grommet. I want to push that in there. You can see there how that, that foam creates the seal around the wire. Now I just need to feed the rest of the wire in there and screw my whole, whole grommet in place. I'm not going to lie to you, it's a little bit tricky getting that wiring grommet to go in place. You got the, the seal washer behind it. A little bit tricky my wire was a little bit twisted I had to pull on the wire on the inside a little bit more okay and that's what she looks like right there and I actually did that wrong I got to put this plate on there so I have to pull that off put this plate on and then screw it back on all right so you can see I've got that extra cover plate on there it's it's tricky guys because it, it's a tight area to work in back there I suppose I could have removed the motor mount to make it a little bit easier I uh, probably should have done that but I got it you know it, it's tricky guys because you got three pieces you got the rubber seal on the back you got the whole grommet then you've got that adapter piece cover piece that goes on the front and you've got to you got to hold all three of those in place press it in line it up with the screw holes and then screw the screws in there without moving that rubber seal out of place on the back side now I have to take that wire I have to run it up through here and bring it out through this whole grommet and then also I need to get my power cord going through this whole grommet and uh, yeah because my battery will be up here let's go ahead and get this whole grommet off I'm gonna do the same thing I did before exchange the top piece for the other piece that's supplied in the tackle tray and I'm gonna go ahead and take the foam piece out of the whole grommet Now comes the tricky part, feeding the wire. Just kind of, we're shooting blind at this point. Oh, here it is. Stick my finger in there, I can feel it. I'm close. I'm close, almost got it. Here it comes. Here it comes. There we go. Gotcha, baby. All right. So, at this point, I don't really pull much wire through because my fish finder is going to go from like here to about here. <laughs> I'm saving you guys some headaches. I'm going through all the headaches so you don't have to. So the next thing I do, I, I've got to thread my power supply through the grommet before I stick the power supply wire in, before I stick the power supply wire through the hole. So it's got to go through this way. I see a potential problem. I don't think the... I don't think the fuse is going to fit through that hole. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to pop this cap open on the fuse, take the fuse out in order to feed it through the hole. So that inline fuse, that inline fuse just barely fits through that hole, but it fits. Thank goodness. It's going to be tricky. That fuse, look at that. That fuse just barely fits through there, but it fits. It fits in the hole grommet. That cap top, you got to shove that through. Look at that. It fit through the whole grommet. 
thank goodness. So I need to get my other uh, end of the battery connection through there. All right, now that I've got my whole grommet on the wire, now I can start feeding the wire through the, the hole in the kayak. See that rubber seal is really del delicate right there. It's already crimping up and it's wanting to fall out of place. So I gotta be careful with that. Very gently feeding the wire through now. Let's see if I can reach in the hole and find that wire. I can't find it. Can't find it. I think it went back the other direction. All right, so I got my, my power supply pulled through. I had to use a screwdriver because my arm just wasn't long enough to get back in there. So I used a screwdriver and hooked it on the wire, was able to pull it up through. That little rubber seal wants to give me fits. It keeps popping off. My next step is going to be to get the correct length of wire pulled out to the fish finder. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and mount the fish finder. So without putting the, the seat in, I'm pretty sure I'm going to want this fish finder as far this way on the track as I can get it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and figure the wire. I'm going to go ahead and figure the wiring that way. That way, if I want to take the fish finder and move it back, I have plenty of wiring, right? I'm going to put this one through there. Uh-oh, it's not going to fit. It's not going to fit now with the other wire in there. Oh, no. Come on, get in there. That's a tight fit. That is a really tight fit right there. Wow. We got it. We got it. I am so worried about that little washer tearing. Very tricky, guys, but you can see how that, that wire is in the slits on the foam piece. Shove that foam and the wires inside of the whole grommet. Pushed in there good. It's looking pretty good right there. Not bad. Once I have my wires through, now I have to take this guy and work it around the wires. Get it going the right direction here. Work it around the wires and snap it into place. There we go. Like that. Let's get this guy screwed in place here. There we go. That's what she looks like. Nice clean install there. Sweet, baby. In the tackle tray that Old Town provides, they give some dielectric compound silicone. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of this silicone and put it on these connectors here. Just a little dab will do you. Help keep those from corroding. All right, my... Uh, Battery connections. I'm going to go ahead and give them a little shot of the silicone. Let's go ahead and plug the battery in, make sure everything's working. Hit the power button. Bam. Nice. Good job, JC. So I brought some zip ties with me. My final step is just going to be to wrap up this transducer wire, get it nice and organized so it's looking good, not flopping around on the inside of the kayak and that way it's I can get it out of the way when I'm putting my battery in and out so got that cooled up nice put a couple zip ties on here all right guys so with this battery on the inside I'm not going to do anything special I mean for now I'm just going to take it and uh, I'll probably just set it in there like that for now see it's got a there's a little ridge a little ridge back there the battery just kind of fits up against so that should be good it's dry storage in there. <laughs> All right, so there were quite a few mistakes and redos that you didn't see, okay? You saw the proper way to do it. Um, I made all the mistakes for you so you don't have to. So if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, thumbs up, please. I would greatly appreciate it. Everybody get out there and go fishing, man. Life is fun. Live it. See ya.